wow <laughs> okay no distraction there. so i was gonna say that i really do admire all our guests who come on they've been vulnerable they really really um they're they're amazing they're courageous women so i admire them i really do admire them and the lady we've got today is another <laughs> Oh, I said Efiko. Yes, she said Efiko. Oh, she's another courageous and very brave young lady. I uh, admire really. Um, li listen, ladies, you really have to up our game. So, and you shouldn't do less than ten thousand steps a day. <laughs> try. Let's try and do at least, at least. No, actually, if not, you've never done ten thousand steps a, a week, right? Uh, a day, right? Uh, yeah, a day. Then try for six. Try for seven. And then maybe the following week you do 10. So, but yeah, let's, next time I'm going to ask, try, just try. Because we need to keep our bodies moving. That's, that's going to help us. It's good for our health. So anyway, I'm going to invite our guest to join us now. Um, oh, what am I doing? Letters to me. Let me invite her to come. To me, D. Where are you? Okay, I'm just going to invite her. <laughs> yes, we saw that start with 500 steps. Hello, Tammy D. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Let me just raise my volume up a bit. Yeah, thank you. That's better. You good? Yes, I'm fine. It's so sunny. It's so it's lovely. Sunny, yeah, it's quite sunny here too. So, ladies, and I'm sure we've got some gentlemen on. Can we give Temi Dai a, a big, big, big welcome? You know the drill now for those who are oldies on Handout Cafe. She'll have some love, hugs, virtual hugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yes. Oh, yes, thank yes. you so much. I want to see more love. Yes, welcome. Temi Dai's in the oh. house. <laughs> Welcome, yes. Oh. See all the love. What's happened? Okay. I don't know. I think I pressed something. I'll just stop touching. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. Is this your hair? Well, according to Amazon, yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's your hair. It's your no, hair. it's not. It's not. You pay for it. It's oh. It's just, it's do you yours. remember? Do you remember my hair story with my no. daughter? Do you remember my whole natural hair story? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> forget that. I have to forget. <laughs> During lockdown, forget. That. You have to tell that story. So. Oh gosh. Anyway, yeah. Oh, no. This is like the okay. first time I'm doing my hair in yeah, a very long time. <laughs> really? Oh. Okay. Well, it looks lovely. You look Thank really you nice. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so ladies. She bought it. Yeah, it's her hair. I can't even tell. Her. I like that. <laughs> um, so welcome, Timmy Dean. Thank you. How Thank are you feeling? Good. I'm a bit nervous. I'm not usually Sorry. nervous. I'm a bit, are you I'm a bit nervous? nervous. Don't be. Don't be. Oh, you're, you're, you're with family. And I, keep seeing, I keep seeing the number go up. The number of people. <laughs> And you wish, no, no, more people are joining. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, it's fine. It's fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Seriously. Um, so, Temi Dayo Olushala, married to a wonderful man. Yeah. With two lovely and beautiful daughters. So, Temi Dayo, just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, so that people can know you. Okay. Uh, yeah, married, mother of two. I have a and soon to be nine year old and a two and a half year old, who's going to be yeah three soon. Um, married for four years. Okay. I can already see people oh, doing four years that. already. Wow. No, right. And it's funny when I tell people I have a nine year old and I've been married for four years, I see their eyes going two, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven how how uh anyway um, um and i work in hr um i love hr okay. um and i've been doing hr all my life i haven't done anything else <laughs> um 
yeah I'm just really passionate about women young people so I do a lot of stuff with young people with girls a lot of career you a stuff I'm a mentor yeah. mentoring two lovely women at the moment yeah that's it for me okay you're also the um you're the first one right yes I'm the first, the first, old, born, first, first girl. Old, yep. Is it true that there's a lot of pressure on the first child, the first one in the house? Yeah, I think first anything. As long as you're the first, there's pressure just to <laughs> to set the way, set the standard, to do this. Um, and I think more so if you're from particular household backgrounds, cultures, definitely lots of. Pressure. Pressure. Okay. okay. Um, but guess guess what? When I was doing, I was actually I actually did research on firstborn uh, okay. girls and uh, okay. boys and all of that. Um, they said there's some characteristics. So let me read out some of the characteristics and tell me if, okay. <laughs> if you have some of these characteristics. Okay. They said they're reliable. Yep. They're structured. They can be controlling. They're achievers. <laughs> And they want to excel at everything. Is that true? So the controlling, I don't know. I think I can see some of my cousins on here. I don't know if they'd call me controlling or okay. my sisters. Um, do I want to succeed at everything? I don't know if I want to succeed. I just want to do the best I can. But yes. maybe that's because I'm, I'm a lot older now. Okay. Um, but I wasn't like a straight A student when I was young, so... I was just kind of like, well, I've done my best, okay. <laughs> so I think some of them, but I think I'm definitely structured, organized, um, okay. and I think I'm reliable. And guess what? <laughs> Half of the Nobel Prize winners were first born. Oh, see, see, see. So we're waiting we're, for We're like Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was the first born. <laughs> Jesus was the first born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right first born only born only child um yeah he was the first one and, and clearly all of us now follow him right you know so yeah i'm not that's that's true first born. okay so that not bad not bad <laughs> great 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 okay so today you've come to, to share your story and um again i want to say thank you for agreeing to do this um thank you because i know you're also going to be very vulnerable and, you know, when we're talking, we said our prayer is that someone will um, mm. will be blessed by this. Someone will be set free. Set free. And as also parents. This is what a lot mm. of parents do. Um, so, yeah. Timidi, where do you want to start? Just start from wherever you, you feel. Where do you want to start from? How long do we have? We have just about we have an, an hour and a bit. Hour. Yeah. Um, anyway, just stop me when I'm traveling off of yeah I'll keep asking questions in okay minutes. okay um so I think I should go back to the beginning um so I was a I just turned 18 so I turned 18 in June um and I was getting ready for uni so by then you know exams are done we're waiting for results that come out in August and we're just having the best summer ever because we know that come September we are flying away from the nest um, and I'm going to be in uni like this is it you know this is my parents dream my dream actually this is just amazing um, and then I can't even remember where or how now um, but I meet a guy and we start talking and I just remember feeling so excited like I was excited because you know, I'm growing up like I'm an adult now. I'm officially Was 18. this your first boyfriend? First boyfriend. Okay. And first, first, yeah, first boyfriend, first love, maybe. Um, although the love was very questionable, but definitely the feeling of, of uh, feeling in love. Um, and it was just amazing. Um, I remember me and my cousins would always talk, like, oh my gosh, exciting. You know, how many, how many times has he called you today? How many times has he texted you? Um, and although at the beginning it wasn't, it wasn't fairy tale. It wasn't, it wasn't how I thought it was going to be. It wasn't like the movies, you know, someone coming up with roses to you. You know, it wasn't Americanized in any way. There was no prom, nothing like that. There was no him taking me on dates. Um, it was kind of, okay, I have a boyfriend. 
cool. Um, and I would notice odd things about him, but when I say odd things, I mean what we would now call red flags, you know, maybe the way he spoke to me, maybe the way he addressed me, um, things he'd say or do. But, you know, I one, I have nothing to compare him to. And for me, this is, oh, well, I guess this is kind of like adult life, right? You, you just accept it. Yeah. Um, and then I realized I had to tell my mom. So my cousin was living with me at the time. Um, and I realized I had to tell my mom, which I hadn't intended on doing. But I realized that our, his mom and my mom had like some mutual friends, both Nigerian. Um, and I was like, oh, you know what? I don't want to go to his house one day, see one of my aunties and then have to start explaining the stories to my mom. Like she would hate that. So I just bolded the courage to tell her because at the end of the day, what's the worst she can do? I'm going to uni in a few weeks. Like there's nothing she could do. Yeah. So I told her and she was really cool about it. I was like, oh, okay. She was, I didn't expect her. I don't know what I expected to be honest, but she was cool about it. And she invited him over for dinner. And I would never forget her her prayer my mom's prayer queen so everything she prays about and then she said oh to the guy please don't destroy this family now at the time I had no idea what she was talking about I was like why would you say that like I just thought she's been a really spiritual typical Nigerian Yoruba mom which one is don't destroy this family so kind of like okay anyway whatever um and then went off to uni and I think it's when I got to uni that I really understood that these were really red flags but if I'm to be honest I was too I think I was too invested okay. and I was really worried like I want I want if I'm to be honest I wanted to be at uni with a boyfriend like that was so cool was and that so because I did... all your friends had boyfriends or what they didn't actually so I don't even know where I got that ridiculous thought from I just thought it was almost like an achievement like Okay, so tick, I've gone to uni, tick, have a boyfriend. Oh my God, I'm moving up in the world. And it sounds so ridiculous now, but I think at 18, 19, it's, I guess, you know, there wasn't so, well, there was, I wasn't on, there was no Instagram then, but definitely Facebook and other social media and what you see in the movies. It was just, this was it. Because after you get a boyfriend, you finish uni, you get married. So I was, I was on my way. Yeah. But he, he just, started to become an abuser and actually it's not that he started he I think was always an abuser I just didn't see it yes. or really understand it um, okay. um but he he would just say things like oh and please you know fix your hair don't do that ridiculous hair that you have all the time or or he wouldn't want to, sh if his friends were coming, he wouldn't want to show me to his friends or just random things. He would ask me to meet him down the way, you know, like far away from where everybody else was. Like, and I just okay. couldn't really understand it. Um, um, uh, lots of stuff about money. Um, I hope there's like no police officers listening. <laughs> so, so he was into a lot of fraud. I didn't really know what it was. I was quite shielded as a child, not, sh uh, maybe shielded is the wrong word, but there's just lots of things I just didn't know because okay. it wasn't in our household. I went to private school. <laughs> it's a lots of things I didn't see. In, and equally, I guess there's some things I did, but you know, so I remember when he was saying he was doing fraud, I was like, what was that? I thought fraud was like, um, like organized crime kind of you know big um stuff to do with organizations I, I I didn't really understand what he meant I was just like okay um and to be honest I thought he was joking you know um and then I remember him asking me to do something with an account I think I had to transfer money from one account you know and whatever he asked I would do like um he was quite manipulative in how he would ask he was very very persuasive everything was well if you love me you'll do this if you love me you'll do this um and I think to be honest I'd seen how my mum was with my dad okay. and she did everything he asked and wanted you know he and yeah and some people say that's what you do in marriage um but I think there's a there's a danger to that and clearly that's where I fell in into that okay. danger um 
anyway, uh, he asked me to do some stuff on this account. In, like I said, whatever he asked. And it wasn't until this bank called me. And I guess from their investigation, they clearly knew that I just knew nothing. Like, um, They said on this occasion, they weren't going to take it further, but they were going to close the account. So I was going on Google and I was researching, you know, some of the stuff that they had said. And I was like, oh my gosh, I could have been in real big trouble. Yes. Um, and I remember him, I remember asking him about it and he was like, oh, aren't you my ride or die? So that even if you go to prison for me, it doesn't matter, does oh, it? Oh, wow. And I just remember thinking... Oh. Like, Oh, in my head, I was thinking, well, if this is love, this love is quite costly. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm really 18. I can't go to prison. <laughs> so, um, and for me, the biggest thing was our circles. Our circles were really different. Our okay. circles were different. Our families were different. Even though we were both Nigerian, how we grew up was very different. Um, he was your, you know, your Southeast London bad boy. And I was your good girl who went to church came home and I think that's probably what attracted me to him like you know in the movies it's the good girl and it's the bad boy mm -hmm. um and after a while the bad boy comes around and he becomes good and it's all great um and so were you hoping different. you would change absolutely I thought the more he hung he hung around me and my friends the more he changed mm -hmm. um and yeah that just that never happened um and then we broke up so I'm uh, so I think we dated for about maybe 10 months um, and we broke up and we broke up because he cheated on me um, and the person who cheated on me with got pregnant. Um, How did you find and I, She, the girl called me. <laughs> so we are on, I think, Easter holiday from uni or Easter break, whatever they call it. Um, and I just get a phone call like 11 p.m. And I was like, who's this? And I remember like calling my cousin to come and listen to the phone. Um, and I was so, Im I think I was just embarrassed, shocked, didn't know what to do. But I think at the time it was definitely God because that was, that probably would have been the only thing that would have got me away from him. Okay. Because clearly, you know, you know, my friends were like, you know, they used to call me Dial. So most people call me Dial. They were like, Dial, we don't like him. He's not good for you. And I was just like, oh, leave me alone. You don't want to know what it's like when you're in love with someone, you know, you just have to ride it out, you know. But, you know, I had friends stop talking to me. I had a lot of guy friends, big brothers, and they were just always not interested in him or us. And so, so I broke even, up. Even the um, fraud thing did stop no, I just, I guess I thought... Because at the end of the day, he was like, oh, when I get this money, I'm going to give it to you. Um, I'm going to do this for you. So in my head, I was just like, oh, he's willing to do this for me. You know, he's sacrificing himself. But, you know, talking about it now, gosh. Oh. <laughs> I guess um, back, yeah. Looking back. Um, uh, and just before, I forgot to say, just before the, um, I found out about the whole baby thing, um, he'd asked me for my student loan money. Um, and I remember giving him all of my student loan money. Wow. Like, I don't think my sisters know this, so if they want the call. <laughs> and thankfully, my mum is not on Instagram. <laughs> um, oh and, and so God. I had to quickly get a job. I remember get, no one, no one got a job in first year because first year you had money, you were just taking your time. Your mum and dad or, you know, guardians had given you a bit of cash, but I had to get one straight away because I had no money. Um, and, even the way it wasn't like, oh, thank you so much. It was like, but we love each other. This is what we're supposed to do for each other. And it's like, oh, okay. But it just kept feeling that I was giving and I wasn't getting anything back. Either the so-called love or even the material stuff, such as the, the money or anything. Stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. And then we break up. Um, so then I got saved I started attending Jesus house yeah. I think I was 20 or 21 um and I guess God just started to really mold my character my confidence and I remember just thinking wow like I really just spent like a year of my life just wasted um with someone I started to understand like you know everything he was doing was not love I started to understand God's love for me I was involved in everything at Jesus house oh my gosh whatever team or department I was involved in 
Um, and then I, when I turned 24, uh, well, just after I turned 24, yeah. um, he contacted me. Yeah. And during the time between 19 and 24, I hadn't had any contact with him. Um, maybe the odd occasion, either with his sister um, or something like that, but nothing between us. Um, and then he, I found out that he had gone to prison. You know, so he was like the bad, like I said, the bad boy. And I remember even telling my mum, oh, um, oh, do you remember so-and-so? He's in prison now. And, you know, she was like, oh, you know, thank God you, you just, you left him kind of, but she didn't really know why at the time. She just knew okay. that we, we broke up. Um, so when he called me again, um, I was like, oh, hi, how are you? Da, 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 just long time, no talk, whatever. Um, and as the conversation grew, he was saved now, apparently. He was talking different. He was acting different. He had a job. He just looked so put together. And I think at the time I just was like, oh God, you've done it. Like, wow, you know, you, you took someone who was right at the bottom and you have molded them to be this amazing man. You know, even the way he spoke, like, yeah, I was almost falling in love again. I was like, wow, you know. And the things that seemed like, red flags like he's been to prison he's been into drugs he's by this time I understood that he had two children with two different women now so but I'm like in my head oh God can do it this is what we've been hearing on the pulpit God can change that you anyone don't, and God can change, God can change anyone <laughs> you know you don't judge people um so yeah so we started dating again um, and I remember t calling my mom and telling her that, oh, guess who I ran into, um, ran into so-and-so. And, -so and um, she just immediately just, she shut me down. She, she was so angry. She was so upset. Like, why would I go down go back to this guy I don't think she ever really liked him I think she always knew that oh, you know this guy's not for my daughter he's not in my daughter's class um as she would say but she never really told me that yeah but I could tell that's what she was thinking okay. and she yeah she just shut me off and I kind of just said to myself oh I'm gonna date him and I'm just not gonna tell you anything you know I'm yeah. gonna prove to you that he's a good guy um and I think that was one of my biggest mistakes um in in one making that decision and not continuing to tell her in fact I just made a point to kind of shut everybody out and I didn't tell anybody um that we were dating again because you thought he had changed yeah I thought he had changed but I also knew that for anyone else to accept him they had to know he had changed as well okay. so I was just I guess giving it time okay. and then once time had passed everybody would see that he's perfect okay. um yeah um and then the as time went on the one you know again I started to see cracks it's like when you just start to see cracks in the ceiling and in my head I'm like well if you're a Christian why are you doing that mm -hmm. I remember one time I saw him um did he used to come to church with you did you go to church with him so he would never come to Jesus house with me okay but well, um, he said he was going to church but he said he was going to church I found out the church he was going to and I attended the church one day with him and the pastor seemed cool like normal it was a small church um and he was actually quite involved i think he was the pastor's like protocol something he was quite involved so i was quite happy he introduced me to the pastor uh, i remember we'd gone to the pastor's house for, for dinner or lunch or something so i kind of thought you know what even these cracks i'm seeing um I'm, we'll just see where this where this goes but there was so many cracks you know, the language started to change. Uh, I remember seeing him once, he was smoking weed. And I was like, why are you doing that if you're a Christian? Like, what? So it's almost everything that I was being taught, everything that God was molding me and teaching me, he was doing the opposite. And I just kind of felt, hold on a minute, this is a bit confusing. You're saying you're this, but you're doing this. Uh, and I kind of would just pray and I would, and I would leave it. Um, and I remember asking him to pray with me one day and he's like, oh, this your prayer is just becoming too much. Mm -hmm. And it was questions like that. Or if I'd said, 
um, I think he wanted to go and work in a gambling company or apply for something. I was like, why would you do that? Like, why don't you ask God? Please, this year, you're just including God too much in this in this life. I was like, hmm. I remember talking to my best friend about it. And she was just like, well, you know, we don't like him. What were you expecting kind of thing? Um, and, and the one thing we would always argue on was sex before marriage. Okay. Always arguing because now I'm saved. Like yeah. I know sex is before marriage is, yeah. is wrong. I'm, like I said, just trying to, as you do at 24, just trying to live life, build my career. Um, but we would argue, like argue and argue. We would battle scripture by scripture by scripture. We would battle. He would show me scripture. I would show him scripture. And you know, thinking about it now, it just reminds me how the enemy also knows scripture so well. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we shouldn't just Please, think I would that. I to know which which scripture did he use <laughs> with regards to sex before? I can't marriage. even remember. I can't even remember. I remember I wrote it all down. It's all in my email because I remember whenever I speak to young girls now, I'm always yeah. telling them. <laughs> um, <laughs> he said that Jesus House had brainwashed me. That why is it always the people that tell you not to have sex are the people that are currently having sex in their marital homes? Um, uh, He said, oh, I remember him saying something about my pastor that I'm sure when he was, my pastor was his age, that he was having sex. Why is it now that suddenly he's seen the light? And he's, you know, just all these things. And sometimes he would say things that were just ridiculous. He'd just be like, that's just dumb. That doesn't make sense. But sometimes I I would go home and I'd be like, hold on a minute. Maybe this guy's. Maybe this, Maybe this guy, guy is because... right. Hold on. And then I look at my Bible, I was like, well, this is so black and white. And I guess now it's the same thing that's happening with religion, you know, and, and the Christian faith. Some are saying abortion yeah. is okay. Some are saying that um, um, that marrying the same sex is okay. You know, you have priests and people just practicing different things. And that's why you just have to really hold on to the truth and know the truth. But at that stage, I'm like, I know the truth a little bit. Yeah. but I've just been saved I'm like hmm maybe you know this doesn't work hmm, who can I talk I don't think I knew anyone who was married my age at that time okay. so anyway the can use scripture to suit their purpose anyway exactly and they can yeah. train, you know some people will say oh where it says drink and be merry it means you can be drunk that's what merry mm. means you know some people say you, some people say you can't drink alcohol like oh my gosh you know there's no wonder that our young people are so confused you know um so, like I said, we would argue so much on that one thing. And every time it'd be um, the typical um, coming over to my house, I was living by myself at that time. I just got property. Um, we start kissing and we always go too far. We'd always end up in an argument and then he'd leave, like literally every single time. So I kind of thought to myself, I need to find a trick here. So I'd either say, oh, I'm not home or meet me here so that we were never... Um, in a like in a loan in a house or um I'd always make sure that someone was in the house with me like a friend a cousin you know and then my sister came to stay with me so in my head I was like oh perfect plan um and in my head I just thought oh you'll marry me soon and then we can have sex anyway like so um and I think I had a very naive um yeah I was very naive like even my husband when he first met me and I was telling this story he was like you're so naive so naive just it's always you, thinking the good i was going to say huh? it's, you have a pure heart that's it you have a pure heart that's what he says but I, I just struggle to see the bad in people you know what he would do something to me he would apologize and i'd feel sorry for him and then i would be the one apologizing wow and I, you know i could start crying because he felt so sorry you know, now all of this was a complete lie. He was completely faking all of this. Um, and I think that's why it was so difficult to see that this guy's using you, he's emotionally abusing you physically, and you just need to run. But I would always make an excuse, you know, or he'd do things like, come and help me pray, let's pray, help me pray for me, pray for me. You're the one who can help me. And I really felt that I was Jesus, that I was the one who had to help <laughs> him. You know, but we have this thing, and, and I see it in a lot of women who think that they're Jesus, you know, that they're the I ones who save, you. and we're not. Yeah. And we're not. Yeah. We can point someone in the right direction, and then we leave, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, come to around October, so I'm 25, 10, 25 in June, and then October, so we're in the winter now. Um, and we hadn't spoken for a long time. I think we'd got into an argument, or kind of hadn't spoken for a long time. And then he... Uh, said he needed to 
come to my house, say he forgot something, something like that. He said something that he needed to come over. And this is probably around 10, 10 p.m. kind of thing. He then got to mine and then found what he was looking for and then said that he needed to, he couldn't go home. Like he was just going to sleep on the couch. He couldn't go home. Um, that's kind of normal because sometimes the trains are funny going back to where he, he lived kind of out of London a little bit. So I kind of just thought, okay, whatever. Um, but you can sleep on the couch. Um, and I remember him kind of like rolling his eyes, you know, this is typical Timmy Dio telling me to sleep on the couch. And, and I didn't think anything of it. And then I'm sleeping in my room and I guess in the night, AM, maybe 2, 1 AM, something like that. I just remember feeling him on top of me. And I was like, <clears throat> you know, if you wake up to that, you're kind of like, what's going on? You get your bearings. I was like, what are you doing? Um, and I just remember him being so brash, horrible. I can't think of the word right now. He was swearing so many things I can't, I can't repeat on here because of the time. But saying really horrible, degrading things. And in his, his mind, he felt, you know what? Why am I waiting for this? I'm not waiting to have sex with you. I'm having sex with you now. So I was shouting. He ripped my knickers. I remember I kept those knickers for so long. Um, and I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I think I was mourning something, you know, like I remember keeping them. They were always in the back of my jaw. And I think it was only when I got married. I was like, okay, I have to throw these away now. But yeah, that was a, another, another process. Anyway, back to the night. I'm, I'm screaming. I'm telling him to get off of me. And, and then I'm saying things like, okay, 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 just wait. Let me just get up first and go to the bathroom and then we'll come back and we'll do what you want to do. Um, and he's like, no, he's not a fool. He's waited this for too long. Just saying some, some horrible things. Um, and then he forced himself um, wow. on me. And... I remember as he left, he said, oh, it wasn't even that great anyway, and kind of just left. And I don't think it had, it had registered okay. at the time. I think I was more like, why would you do this to me? But I thought you loved me. So I'm now thinking, that means you don't love me. Like this whole time, since we were 19, like I can't believe this like I was just in disbelief and I guess I just I didn't really think anything had happened I just literally buried it in that moment because I remember talking to some of my 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 best friend after and saying that you know what if I had known if I had registered properly you know yeah. I would have gone to the doctors I would have gone to the pharmacy I would, there's so many things I could have done but mm. I just think i buried it um and I remember he didn't call um for about a week Sorry or to go back. you didn't you didn't um you didn't even I guess maybe because you hadn't processed it properly you didn't think to report it to the police no. or anything report it like till it was only very recently that I even would even consider it rape I would never call it rape I would never so for me it was like what was I going to tell the police that my boyfriend came and we had sex mm -hmm. but I didn't want the sex yeah. Like I didn't, it, it didn't cross my mind to even do that. I think I was upset with him. Okay. Um, and it wouldn't even be till years later that I got mad with him. You know? I was just upset. Um, Did you blame yourself? Definitely. Because I felt that, at least for this, this second time that we were dating, that God wasn't interested in us dating. God wasn't approving of it. But I was almost telling God, don't worry, God, I'll sort it. Don't worry, you'll see. You know, and that scripture that talks about obedience is better than sacrifice. You yeah. know, if I, I still think about it now, like if I had just obeyed, you know, because God was speaking to me that whole time, okay. saying, you know, move, leave. I remember having a dream once, um, now I'm going to the dream, but... but to me, the dream was saying that he was spiritually asleep um, and that if I wasn't careful, certain things were going to happen. And I had consistent dreams. Even before I got pregnant, I had, I would have a dream every month. Yeah. Um, the same dream, which was I was pregnant and I gave birth by myself, whether a park bench, whether in the garden. I was always, it was always a horrible place where I was giving birth. 
Um, and every morning I would wake up from the dream, I would then be on my, my monthly. So, at one, you know, I remember one point even calling my mom to say, I pray because there are some witches and wizards. How can I have a dream? And then this is happening, the same consecutive dream. You know, but I never, I would always make an excuse as to why it had nothing to do with me and the current situation I was in. Okay. You know, so. Um, okay, so how did you, tell us, how did you find out that you were pregnant? So I had started my master's. So we hadn't broken up after this. We're just not talking. He had texted me about a week later to say, oh, I'm really sorry I forced you. I shouldn't have done that. Um, I said some horrible things, something like that. Um, I didn't respond and I just stopped responding. He'd come to my door, I'd stop responding. And then I had already agreed to do my master's. So I started my master's. But I just noticed that I was feeling dizzy and I'd come out of the tube station and I'd like almost having to hold something at the tube station. So I was speaking to my colleague, she was like, oh, I should see your GP about that. So I did, and the GP said, I needed to do like an ECG scan, you know, some heart scan thing. So they said, oh, to do it, you need to make sure you're not pregnant first. So I was like, oh, I'm not. Um, they were like, you know, have, if I've been sexually active. And in my head, first thing I was just like, well, no, I'm not. And then it kind of dawned on me like, oh, whoops. So I remember going home that night, literally that night, did a test. And it was, I was pregnant. I did like 15 tests across the front here. Like the, the blue, the red lines didn't even wait before. Like, you know, usually I think it says you have to wait five minutes. Like within seconds, this thing was pink. And I was like, no, this can't be. Like, I just felt my life flash before my eyes because. So this was like about how many weeks a month? Months. Was it how many weeks a oh, month? Oh gosh, I'm like, I'm like this is like six weeks now this is like six weeks now october this is no this is the end of november maybe, maybe even almost two months actually okay. um and i am uh i can't explain i just remember i was on my bathroom floor and i was crying i was crying i was crying i was crying you know there's so many things that can happen to someone well yeah. as i thought but none of them compared to, to this because, you know, I would say to myself that if I had got a disease, that would have been better because I'd be in the hospital. At least everybody would come and say, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd make my peace with God and I'd go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But to be pregnant, like I'm the first child, I'm the first mm -hmm. grandchild. Mm -hmm. My mom is, how my mom is with me is like, I'm the prototype. So any other daughter in her, with her friends and family that's maybe gone astray, yeah. ah, Daya will speak to her. Don't worry, Daya will speak to her. Mm. So from like 14, I was calling my cousins who were younger than me and saying, oh, you know, you need to listen to your mom. You know, your mom just oh, loves you. My mom was so proud, over proud of me. Um, and how, and really proud as to how she had trained us, you know. Yeah. All she, um, three girls in the UK she spent money on us, like, and to be pregnant was just, so I can't think of the word. Thing. It was yeah. just, it was disgusting. It was devastating. It was, I don't want this. And I guess, you know, for some people, the easiest thing is just to get an abortion. Yeah. Like easy, quiet, at that stage, no one would even, no one would ever know. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> For me, I just felt like, hold on, you first of all disobeyed God by being with someone you shouldn't have, mm -hmm. you know. Then he forces you to have sex. Now you're pregnant, then you want to compound it by going to get an abortion. Oh my gosh, I just thought, I just felt like I had no way out. And so for me, the only thing to do was how could I get rid of this pregnancy without it being on my hands? Um, and I, I tried to do everything possible if I can get to try and get rid of this child you know I remember waking up I'd wake up in the morning with one eye first just to check whether my bump was still there and I hid this thing for so long I didn't tell work until six months even work it was like I was the golden child you know they had so much high hopes for me my manager would say I see you've been manager director in a few years you know but and I, I was like how am I good so I didn't tell work for so long and then I remember the my manager's PA saying, 
I don't know why you're trying to hide it because we all know. Oh wow! So <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but they were really um, supportive. But uh, I needed to tell my mum. I needed to tell my spiritual father, and those were probably the two hardest things. Um, so people had, I told my grandparents first and they, they were just grandparents. Oh, congratulations. You know, for them, it's a baby. They don't, they don't. And clearly I didn't tell them what had happened. I just said, I'm pregnant. In fact, I didn't tell anyone what happened. I think I'd two, one, maybe three people. Um, and so they said, oh, don't tell your mom over the phone because knowing your mom, she could just fall down now and whatever. So my grandpa was going to Nigeria and my spiritual father was going to Nigeria as well. So they agreed to tell my mum. Okay. And they did. And you guessed it, she just Yeah, she was like, it's Yeah. So she didn't talk to me for uh she didn't talk to me until I was seven months pregnant, I think. Okay. I think I was six, seven months pregnant. Um and she was, yeah, as you can imagine, she's a typical Yoruba. Lagos socialite woman and she was you know I've done this to her um how could I do this to her you know the shame and she just split up with my dad some okay. time. maybe not just yeah a few maybe a few months or maybe even a few years actually I can't remember um like officially split with my dad and so it was very clear from my dad's side of the family that I did this to myself mm. because mm. my parents had split, you know, mm. and because my dad had, my mum had split away from my dad. So all of this was my mum's fault. And so my mum got a lot of flack for this. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I always say that parenting, and I know that now, parenting to girls is very interesting. It's, um, parenting is very similar to material things we buy, such as houses and cars. Because the only way you know if I'm doing well in life is by the stuff I have. Maybe the clothes yeah. I'm wearing, yeah. um, my hair's put together. You see me, I'm driving a Mercedes or BMW. You see the house I live in. You're like, oh, you know, she's doing well for herself. Doing well, yeah. The same, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, even though all of those things are not mine, they're rented, they're loaned, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the same with our children. I think that we... Our, our children are a reflection on how well we are doing, not just as parents, but in life, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So lockdown has really brought a lot of things forward about how people parent because it's suddenly it's open. Yeah. And we're not used to having the parks and the niceties we, we have around us because everyone's at home. Yeah. Um, I think and, I, we, we did, sorry to interrupt, we did, um, mm -hmm. I think friend Sister Abby did um, the session on parenting. One of the things she said was that our children are not our trophies. They're not our trophies. But we, but we think they are. We think they are, yeah. We think they are. It's, oh, you, know, she's done, oh, you know, my dad talks about, oh, mommy, what is, she's done masters, masters, masters. <laughs> like, you know, or this or that. And suddenly my mom couldn't boast about me anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, saying it now, I almost I feel sorry for her now because just thinking about what she went through, regardless of how she dealt with it, and even though she dealt with it in a, yeah. in a way that probably wasn't great, she 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 was at the center of it. You know, she had text messages. She had to deal with all the. She dealt with it. People yeah. saying almost people saying, "Ha ha, your daughter's pregnant. You're not so great, mum, are you?" Literally, that's what people text her, um, and. I think that's when I really understood what shame, guilt, that was, that was it. That was that period, I think, between when I was like three months pregnant and seven, eight months. That was when the shame was just. Even you, amongst, let's, um, away, from, away from your mom now, what about your friends and your, um, how did they deal with it? So I think, you know, whenever you go through anything in life, you always, they say, you know, you find out who your friends are or you find out the definition of friendship. I think there's so many definitions of friendship. Yeah. Um, there's one friend and my sisters uh, who has just stood with me throughout the, you know, in fact, my husband and her, you know, my husband always makes room for her 
um, my best friend because he knows that she has been there through everything. Hospital, while I was giving birth, looking after her, um, whatever, he is, she, he just, she's been there. And I think when I first found out I was pregnant, there were three girls who I just, literally three angels, I call them, who God placed in my life at that time. Like, if I didn't feel like going anywhere in public, if I didn't feel like coming to church, they would literally wait for me outside church and stand with me and literally bodyguard me. Like, the way they just literally physically, when I'm coming through the doors of church, they would just bodyguard me. And I just, I thank God for those people. You know, the reason why God says that you can never, you will never, he says you will never go through anything you can't handle. It's because mm. he knows people who he's going to put in place at that time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he put those three uh, ladies, they know who they are. And I just, thank God for their lives because I definitely would have without a doubt have committed suicide without them easily mm-hmm. easily because I was so suicidal that was the easy thing because mm-hmm. I planned in my head that I would commit suicide or try to I yeah. would then um quickly say like the Lord's prayer before my last breath you know and it sounds so ridiculous and even comical but that's how much I thought about it. I had planned and planned and planned. You know, so I would do. Let's explore that a bit. Was that because um, you saw no way out at that time? Or was it the shame? I think both. Because okay. the shame happened and so there was no way out. Because for some, the way out would have been an abortion. But yeah. I was so, I was, you know, I was so fearful, like, you know, God would strike me down as I'm on the the, the, ta- the theatre table or I'd never be able to have children again or um, just, yeah, you know, end up in hell. Like that for me was so fearful. So I was always trying to do something that I would not get in trouble for, you know, that I wouldn't, you know. So all sorts of things. I would think to myself, like, if I just keep thinking and thinking I'm walking to the road, then it wouldn't be my fault because I'd just be thinking and then I'd get, run over or something and you know um so just you know looking back on it now really stupid things but the the shame was so much you know I would walk through places where people are and even if there's just two people it feels like there's a hundred people there Mm. you know even if people don't know I feel like people know yeah um and you know I think for me the worst was church because I was accept when I, I was accepted at work because it was yeah Tony's having a baby it's fine congratulations um, home I could deal with in the sense that one my parents were in Nigeria um, my sisters at the time were in Nigeria okay. so I could just turn off my phone if I didn't want to speak to anyone you know but I couldn't get away from friends from people and from church yes. and. And this is, especially church, this was some, a place you were involved in actively. I was so involved in church at the time. And, and I just had this thing where, why should I not be able to go to church? Mm. Like, I, I just couldn't understand why I should give up church because I'm suddenly not feeling welcome. And it, it just didn't sit well with me. Hold on a minute. I thought church was for sick people. Mm. I thought church was people would welcome me but actually I would have people saying what are you doing in church you're you're a backslider why are you why are you in church Mm -hmm. I had people you know saying all sorts of horrible things um I remember once my cousin was someone had dropped my cousin home and um or was driving her home or to the station yeah and the ladies were talking about what people were doing to me oh, you know, the way they're treating Tenny D is so bad. But not knowing she was my cousin. <laughs> you know, so I just, you know, they always say that church pain is the worst pain because you're supposed to go to church to feel, um, to feel better. loved, to yeah. feel better. You know, you can be scandalous Monday to Saturday, but on Sunday you're supposed to just feel better. You know, people yeah. use church as a quick fix. Yeah. Um and for therefore, for someone to say that I wasn't worthy to go to church, not only did it hurt. Why did someone actually say that to you? Lots of stuff. Wow. <laughs> um, wow. But 
I just couldn't understand it. I was like, wow, I'm that bad. Wow. You know, but, and then what compounded it was, it was like, I didn't even do this to myself. It's not like I was just running around and sleeping with different guys. Like, Mm -hmm. but I hadn't conveyed that message and I wasn't going to because I didn't want anyone to. You didn't have to, even if. (laughs) I think there are things we accept in church. There are certain things, there are sins that are accepted. There are, Mm -hmm. there are, there are even diseases that are accepted, you know. If someone was to get HIV, no one even cares whether it was um, like going to the barbers or something like that. Yeah. You know, we've put, we've put things on pedestals in different lanes, you know, what's accepted in church and what's not accepted yeah. in church, you know. Um, all that sin is a bit too much, but that sin is okay. Um, and... But God doesn't yeah. categorize sin. In, in he doesn't, he doesn't. He doesn't, all. he said even lying. He doesn't, lying. I know. Lies will go to heaven, that's what he said in his word. So whether you can, oh my goodness, anyway. Wow. wow so yeah that period was um probably the worst in my life like it was just horrible you know even now when i walk through the foyer now sometimes i'm like because <gasps> you just why well, you have flashbacks you just have a flashback of just walking through the foyer and just feeling like everyone is looking at me i'm literally the only person in the whole world who's pregnant and it's like how dare you still come to church like um yeah, that was that was horrible. Okay, let's um okay. I I need I think we need to talk about this shame issue and everything. Mm. But let's quickly just finish with so you can't your beautiful, beautiful daughter. Mm. I would say that she's my catalyst for greatness. She God wow. just used her to do things to my life in my life. She's so amazing. She's so Oh, and she's going to be like, like it's 10 years since it happened and she's going to be nine and it's just wow. Wow. she's so she's so full of life anyone that knows her she's so full of life she's full of joy you know she said the other day I'm going to start my own YouTube channel mom I was like okay oh. <laughs> and then her dad you know typical um, my husband was like oh you know but they're YouTube trolls you know you don't all these social media trolls she's like mm, I don't really care about them you know people are always going to say bad things but I just know I'm great <laughs> She's so amazing. Um, the relationship she, relationship she has with her dad, my husband, is so amazing. Oh, tell us, before we see them, okay, oh, let's so, go back a bit. So, go so, back, okay. When did you meet him? When did you meet him? So she was two when I met him. So she was born in 2012, so I met him in 2014. Okay. Um, I had no plan on meeting anyone, as far as I was concerned this is the punishment I got for disobeying. I was going to live by myself with this child. I was going to be the, you know, the auntie that um, never brings anybody to a dinner party. She brings her child. I was going to be the one who looks after all the children because I'm not married, you know, and I just settled my fate with that. So I wasn't looking for a husband or, or, or a father for her. She had plenty of father figures. She had two godfathers. She had lots of grandpas and uncles. She was fine. Um, and then mutual friend's birthday party and my friend dragged me out. I think that was the first time I'd been out since I had had her. Yeah. Um, um, and then, yeah, I met him at our mutual friend's birthday. Um, he asked for my number, but I was just like, yeah, this isn't going anywhere because I knew that the moment I told him I had a kid, it was just going to go. So I'd planned on not telling him that I had a kid. Um, and then we'd been speaking for some, like, for some months now, just speaking on the phone. Every time he'd ask me out, maybe for drinks, I'd say, oh, I'd make up an excuse because I couldn't get a babysitter in time anyway. So I just, oh, I've got work. I've got this thing at work. Um, and mostly when we spoke, we spoke during the day when she was at nursery and I was at work, or we spoke at night when she was sleeping. Mm-hmm. And then one day he called me on a Saturday. Um, and I'd planned in my head that when he called me, I will if there was a kid crying in the background, I would say I'm babysitting, you know? <laughs> but this day he called and he said, who's that? And I just said, my daughter. And I went, oh! and I just put the phone down because I didn't plan on telling him. And I just didn't know what to do now. And I was like, okay, well, that, sh- that ship has sailed. So he called me back, he's like, did you just say you had a kid? And anyone who knows my husband, he's quite reserved, he's quite quiet. He's very Nigerian. How we even match? I don't know. He's very Nigerian. He's um, 
And, you know, at the beginning, it didn't work out. He was quite rude. I felt this kind of Nigerian sarcasm that he had. That I just wasn't feeling he was rude. And I was like, this is not going to work because I'm not going to beg anybody to be my husband. I was also quite proud. I was like, I'm not going to beg anybody. So, um, And then cuff about five, six months later, literally the middle of the night, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to text him. I was like, no way, I'm not texting him. That would just be desperate, right? Like, who does that? But I couldn't sleep. And literally around about 4 a.m. in the morning, I texted him and kind of sent him a prayer. Um, and the rest they say is history, I think. Um, and I always say that the one reason that he always says he um, was really attracted to me was like, he said, he felt like I forgot I had a kid. He was like, don't you know you have a kid? Like, but you're still so bold and we still went to church after all that time. Why didn't you find another church? I said, I, you know, I tried, <laughs> you know, or he was like, I, I really treated her like a handbag. Like I was proudly showing her off. Um, but I'd always thought that she was never the issue. Um, yes, so her fault, definitely. Exactly. Her. You know, and I wasn't going to make her pay. I remember at one point I wasn't going to have a naming ceremony because I do want to see him there. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to make her pay and not have things because of the things around her. So she's going to have everything that she's entitled to. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yep, that's how I met him. Um, yeah, and the and two of them are just... And then I had yeah, another girl. Had baby two and a half years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. I was telling you today, I did a statistics, um, rather I did a research mm. and um, the statistics actually show that most people actually know their, um, rape vic uh, the people who rape them. Mm -hmm. Now the mm -hmm. saddest bit is, let me read this, it says eight out of 10 rapes are committed by someone known to the victim. Eight out mm. of 10 is actually committed by someone known to the victim. Now, the craziest one, Tim D, it says 85,000 women mm. and 12,000 men aged between 16 and 59 experience rape each year. And that's roughly 11 rapes every hour. 11 every disgusting. hour. I'm most nice. known by people who know that. Let me even read further. So it says 19.5% are committed by strangers. 39% are committed by an acquaintance. 33% are committed by current or foreign spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend. 6% are committed by more than one person or 2.5 by non-spouse. Mm. So a majority are people that actually know the mm. victim. And what people don't realize is that whether you're dating someone, whether it's your mm. husband, if a woman says no, mm. Yeah. Yeah. no is no. I don't, I don't think I'd ever, um, if I heard about rape, uh, let's just say maybe between teenagers, 13 and 18, it was always the way social, social media painted it. You're watching a film maybe the girl's walking home at night and then she gets raped by a um, stranger. So, or maybe once in a while you hear, maybe watching some Nollywood Nigerian film, you know, that the dad, the stepdad raped the daughter or something random. But you never, I, I was, I certainly never felt it was close to me. You know, like I said, I never saw, I never saw it as a rape for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And even saying it now just sounds, you know, even the word rape sounds dirty. It sounds, it's, it's shameful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it's not like any other crime. You know, when we hear about another crime, it, I don't know, fraud, like I said, or um, even and that's murder, why it doesn't don't, sound. That's why people don't report it. People don't report it. You know, people ask me, did I tell the police? No, I would never. Mm. Because I'm going to have to tell people what happened. I'm going to, and for me, I felt that I had done wrong. Yeah. Because people think I'm stupid. Hold on, you saw all these telltale signs and you didn't move. In fact, people were like, people had said, Timmy D, you need to move away from him. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't listen. So, well, then you get what you get, isn't it? So there are so many people who are going to hear the story for the first time. Because 
or when people do hear, they say, why didn't you tell me? What? How am I? I'm not going to say, hi, by the way, yesterday. You know, because it, it's, it is a level of vulnerability for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and, and, and then this, for me, was the stupidity factor, you know, because there were so many times that I, that I could have left, that I could have said no to this, that I should have moved away. Um, and for whatever reason, I didn't, you know? Um, yeah. Um, someone asked a question. Did you have any counselling? I did. I did. <laughs> I, did. Um, I was introduced to someone um, who, who, who was just amazing. Um, and he, one thing he helped me to see was he took it back, you know, to this whole issue of naivety, to this issue of insecurities, to this yeah, issue, that's... you know, like he asked me a question. He said, oh, with this guy, when did I know he was the man of my dream? And he was, you know, as he was saying, he was so excited. And I was like, oh. he was never was the like, man. Oh, you don't need, you oh, man. And it suddenly dawned on me that he was never the man of my dreams, yeah. you know. But, so then he started talking about, so what made me think that I deserved less than the man of my dreams? And you know, I was like, oh, well, the questions are, well, you know, because at the point I met him at, at age 19, why did I think he was so well? What did he have to offer? And this is something we don't teach our girls. What did he have to offer you yeah. that you felt he was so well? You know, why were you so excited to have a boyfriend? You know, and I just, I, I wish more parents would talk to their children about this. There's so many of my mum's generation, I guess, especially just go to uni and then you're supposed to suddenly bring home a guy and say you're getting married. And when you're 35 and you're not married, everybody's saying, why are you not married? So, mm. like, you didn't at no point teach me this stuff. You know, yeah. um, we spend so much time reading about if you want to become a doctor, you have to spend seven years reading medicine. But to get married, you don't have to read anything. You can awesome. literally go to the court. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, to, or to, that's not even marriage is even too far to even be in a relationship with someone. Mm. You don't have to read anything. You can just say, hey, yeah. we're together. Yeah. And yeah, there's this. Yeah, it's just it's crazy. You know, and I, I deliberately spend time telling my daughter how amazing she is so she knows yeah. so she doesn't need to be validated by anybody and then when someone is treating her that doesn't make her feel amazing she can tell those signs really quickly yeah. because one thing I always say is red flags never become green flags impossible for a red flag in my opinion so tell I mean I, I don't think we have a lot of um young people on but tell us a bit about the red flags again that so you know if, hindsight you know and this is i don't think this is even for young people i have a friend who's in her 40s you know and she said that her ex guy was swearing at her you know for me now some people swearing is not a big deal it's like vocabulary but there's a reason why swearing is not in the dictionary you know because yeah. it's yeah. not proper vocab and if you, yeah. for me if you cannot use any other vocabulary to describe the anger that you're feeling mm -hmm. it means that you don't have the intellect to reason yeah. with emotional yeah. So you shouldn't be in a relationship. That's how yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, but some people will say swearing is just, you know, you put 50p in the cookie jar, you know, but she wasn't going to have it. So when she was telling people that the reason why she broke up, because I was like, oh, you're in your 40s, you should be getting married. Can you imagine? I know. <laughs> can, you imagine? can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I think it froze for a second. You know, so oh. red flag is anything that just goes against that that's what you believe feel in your, your heart values. you know what you believe your values your faith um anything and if it goes against that and makes you think mm, then take the, the most you can do or the least you can do is take time to yeah. figure out figure it out you might then realize oh actually it wasn't a red flag I, I was being a bit too sensitive but take the time there's no rush with these things you know mm -hmm. if someone is not treating you he was always telling me i'll never find anybody like him he's the only one who will accept me with all my flaws you know um, uh, you know things about your hair if someone doesn't like your hair then you know it, 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 that that's that's so it's so minor so definitely emotional abuse I think is is a massive massive red flag someone who doesn't make you feel confident yes he doesn't make you feel mm -hmm. confident he doesn't make you feel good about yourself he's always because someone yeah. said explain more red flags please someone who makes oh, okay. you feel less less than you, who you than know you yourself are. to be yeah you know um red flag could be how he is with his friends 
Yeah. And I'm sorry, we're only talking about guys, red flag. Um, I'm sure get, ladies have their red flags as well. Yeah. But, you know, if a guy, how he treats his family members, his friends and people Very around important. him. Yes. Um, for me, a big red flag for me was work. Okay. You know, and this guy just never seemed to take work with respect. Mm. And so therefore it was, can you lend me five pounds, please? Can you lend me 10 pounds, please? Or oh, I need money on my Oyster card. Can you lend me? Yeah. Can you lend me? Can you lend me? Yeah. You know, if for me, I'm quite traditional. And if a guy doesn't respect work and the value of diligence with work. Now, that's why I said work. I didn't say career. I didn't yeah. say he has to work yeah. in investment banking. You know, the yeah. opposite. If he's not willing to go to Tesco and stack shelves to build his dream. You know, I always say that, especially, and, and I, I, some people may disagree, but I always say, especially if somebody's out of work, maybe a guy or something, and you say, oh, I can't get work. And I think, but if you go to Tesco, you might find There's jobs, you know, there are jobs, you know. There are things you can do. And that's why I say work. I don't necessarily say career yeah. or jobs, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, you know, something my husband does, he always wakes up before me. Because when I was, when we were dating, I was explaining the things that my ex did that I didn't like. And one of them was that he just, you know, you call it, he's a bum, you know, you call it that, you know, he'll be sleeping in the bed and I'm going to work. And then I get a text message saying, can I have 10 pounds, please? <laughs> so, so now my husband makes it a joke. <laughs> he makes me a joke about it to always leave the bed before, well, before I wake up and he's doing something on his laptop, <laughs> even if he's doing nothing, you know, um, so I think, yeah, red flags is just a flag. It's that warning sign that comes up that makes you think, hmm. And we all get it. And it's yeah. in that decision and that moment yeah. that you decide, are you going to further investigate that flag or is it, are you just going to leave it? Um, so, yeah. Someone just asked the question, what if okay. things are concealed until later after the wedding? I think most times, from the little I know, they always, mm. there's always something there. It's just that you refuse to pick it up. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, especially if you've known the person for a long time, maybe a few months, they will always show up. Yeah, they'll show their and, colors. Yeah, I, I just you know some people have a different school of thought that yes, it's possible for someone to to just um, change their ways when they get married, and I think it is. You see some people that they're the perfect man, perfect dating. Oh my gosh, amazing! The moment you get married is something else. Okay. But I think that's rare. I think that's quite rare, and I think as as ladies as human beings we have a duty of care to really find these things out so it's not just about what happened you know things just happening it's about you being intentional to say like I never asked the question I never asked the question why are you not working why do you think it's okay not to have a job why do you talk to your mum like that why do you talk to your sisters like that why aren't you helping your mum why do you think it's okay to steal off someone else like I never asked the question and I simply didn't ask the question because I didn't want to hear the answer Mm. so you knew you know, I knew I didn't want to hear the answer yeah. I was buying time because I was yeah. trying to help God you know I was yeah. buying time that the more he have, comes into contact with me I'll rub off on him and he'll suddenly change yeah. you know and yeah. Uh, yeah that wasn't the case okay let's talk about shame now remember when we we're having this conversation mm. we're saying that for a lot of parents so what happened to you now? And I'm not blaming your mom or anything because mm. it happens even to someone like even me and a lot of other people that are parents. Mm. When something like this happens, it's usually about us. What people will mm. say. Yeah. Ah, um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, go pregnant. Yeah. What will people say? Do you know it's interesting? I was having a conversation with my daughter the other day and um, we're talking about this how parents the shame is on the parent not the daughter mm. and um my daughter was like mommy i hate to say this but you used to do that I said, me what did i used to do I said, mommy, <laughs> i remember when i was a teenager and i used to wear she used to wear short dresses and all of that mm. i said how can you wear that as a judge what would people say i said oh i said that but i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just it's definitely a cultural thing and I can't speak for other cultures, yeah. but I remember my mom would make me, um, she would tell me to practice bending down with my dress or my skirt to see mm. how short it was in front of her. And again, it was about what will people say? What will yeah. people think? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and so I remember when I, when I told her and she's crying and she's hysterical, she said, why have you done this to me? What will people say? Yeah? What will they say? How can I carry my face? What will I do now? You know, or when people found out, they were like, why didn't I tell them? You know, we're so centered around others. 
and what others think. Even the most confident person says, oh, I'm wearing this dress for me, you know. No, you're yeah. not. You're wearing it for yeah. how others will see you. You know, because when you're in your house, when no one sees you, you don't wear that dress. So clearly you're wearing it, you know, or with the skirt, the hair, whatever. Um, and it's because we want people to think that we are okay, that we have everything together. You know, this, the, the um, analogy I used about the car. Yeah. I remember we used to drive a Mercedes and I loved that car so much. And then my husband was like, oh, you know, the kids are getting older. We need to start saving. And he was like, oh, what do you think about this Nissan Leaf? And I was like, what? Hey, yes. And I was like, no. I, was, and I remember saying to him, oh, if you're going to drive that car, please just park it at Brentwood Station and I'll walk to church <laughs> in it because I'm not going to church in that car. And we battled and battled and battled over this car. Uh, we ended up getting something in the middle, you know. And I remember the Holy Spirit talking to me like, why do you care what other people but mm -hmm. that's what we do we care about what other people think yeah. everything we have is about trophies and what shelf it's on um and i think it's a society thing but i think as parents we should be able to break it because you know a lot of us are upset when our children don't follow the path we the envisage one, for them yes. in their head you know yeah. and i just think about jess now and in my head, I'm like, after all that I've gone through, you think she's going to marry just any guy? No way. <laughs> so already in my head, I'm like, <laughs> you know, and it takes the Holy Spirit, I think, to to really tug out of that. Um, because already I've said it, ha, I've suffered with this child. I suffered with pregnancy. So are you telling me she's just going to marry one, you know, or that she's not? Or I think I have things to prove, mm. you know, so I want her to do well so she can prove to all the people who wanted me to abort her, all the people who um, who said, oh, you know what, now that she's pregnant, she's just going to be in a council flat. She's just going to, not that there's anything wrong with council flats, but she's just going to, you know, have a horrible life. You know, so I'm, I'm always wanting to prove to people. But then my husband is the complete opposite, you know, and he doesn't care. And I've learned so much from him. And I'm just like, maybe you need to cut your hair. Like, what are people going to think? Can you go and cut your hair? <laughs> but he doesn't care. And, I, I, and, and I'm starting to see that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but we think it does. Um, but it takes one person to break the cycle. Yeah. Otherwise, it just becomes a cycle. You know, I was reading, um, there's this lady called Brené Brown. I'm sure a lot of people probably read her mm -hmm. book. Okay. She wrote, she wrote um, Daring Greatly and some other great books, but okay. she's done a lot of research into shame and being mm. courageous and vulnerable. And she said, because we live in a culture uh, where being accepted is so important, we mm -hmm. all want to fit in. That's mm -hmm. why this thing about shame, when things go wrong, it's like they wouldn't accept me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm part of this culture, this Yoruba mm -hmm. thing where ah, everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and then my child does this or my child, something mm -hmm. happens. So it's mm -hmm. like now that I would fit in with mm -hmm. the others. But she said that shame will not thrive in, or rather shame needs three things to grow. It needs mm -hmm. secrecy, it needs silence, and it needs judgment. And remember we talked about, mm -hmm. one of the things we, I also wanted us to talk about was judgment. We tend mm -hmm. to make a lot of judgment about people. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me, let me, I had this conversation. This was a few weeks ago with uh, someone, a young guy, actually. And we're talking about um, um, teenage pregnancy and all of that. And he said something. He said, why do we use the term? We say, oh, she had a child out of wedlock. Mm. He said that even that statement mm. is judging the person. She had a child mm -hmm. out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. Why can't we mm -hmm. just say she got pregnant? Mm -hmm. But yep. once we use that statement out of well, you that's put shame. them in a yeah, and you yeah, put, put them in the box in that box. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, was, I saw a WhatsApp, um, and it said that when we refer to men, they're Mister, but when we refer to Miss, when we refer to women, we have to find out if they're Miss, i.e., they're divorced or widowed. Yes, if they're yes. Miss, if they're single or they're married. You yeah. know, and already that puts people in boxes. It categorizes yeah. people. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I think the church has a has a has a part to play in this the same way the church has a part to play in environmental stuff and recycling and global warming and revival and all the you know covid etc um but we're just not i don't i think we still see things as in boxes you know um if you look at the old testament there was a lot of putting women in boxes you know yeah um look at some of the women in the bible maybe like tamar who was raped and they they 
they put those women in boxes and then Jesus comes and he's like give the children bread they're all the same you know yeah. and but we haven't grasped on I feel sometimes we're still acting like we were in the old testament you know without without Jesus whereas he's come to take the judgment on for us mm -hmm. yeah. you know and I think one of the most most difficult things there were so many things that were difficult but the one that I think still gets me is when I was told that she couldn't be dedicated mm. and I just <sighs> I'm talking I'm, when I'm I think about it now <laughs> even when I think about it now because I felt because now I'm a mother you know all the I've been pregnant for nine months all the hormones you know and now I feel like okay you're not punish me I get it if you want to punish me, if you want to tell me I'm, I'm banned from the church, I was told to step down from so many things that I was um, doing in church. No problem. I get that. But her, and you look at her, and she was this cute little yellow baby. Because <laughs> she was so, you know, just a light puff of, uh, we used to call her puff puff. <laughs> and to, to, to not, for her not to be allowed, what did she do? I didn't, mm. I, even till now, I still couldn't understand it. And it just made me angry. You know? I'm not an angry person. I can shout a little bit and then I'm fine. But this still makes me angry because I don't, because you've put it in a box and that means that you still think. And then I'm only allowed to dedicate her when, I've, when I'm married. So when I'm now worthy, does she become worthy? But hold on a minute. You've been teaching me from the pulpit that I'm worthy the moment mm -hmm. that Christ formed me in my, in my mother's womb. So how did I suddenly become unworthy? Mm -hmm as a as a one-year-old child so I think the the shame the boxes sorry the judgment is just we don't have the the power to judge the bible says we should test spirits so by all yeah. means test the spirit and know whether yeah. that spirit that person is for yeah. you not for you whether yeah. that yeah. group whatever but to judge the bible says he will have mercy on whoever he has mercy on and the title of today is so apt because God came in to really have to 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 just wipe that judgment and the slate clean that's yeah. what his mercy does for us yeah. Yeah. regardless of anything you know the yeah. murderers in prison you know a lot of us feel like we are the ones who we we, we are the judge the jury and the, i can't remember that saying you know we're also, you know, the, the judge there's one more thing you know so we want to pronounce judgment then we want to do the sentencing mm. you know we're angry if the sentencing is not enough yeah. you know ah, how can that woman she had like seven abortions how come yeah. she just got married like that that's not fair we okay. want to then be the one who allocate god's blessings you know you just have a little bit of blessings because yeah. you lied the other day you know mm -hmm. ah, that, that woman and she's been so good girl, and she's not my, like we i i don't know where we where we get this from you know maybe it's i think it's society again i don't know I think a lot, a lot of it, even things that we bring into church, I think a lot of it is cultural, to be honest. Mm. It's not really the way of God. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the it truth. Isn't. And don't, there's a place for culture, and I love my culture. Like, I yeah. literally think we have one of the best cultures. Um, and I love other cultures. I love the Japanese and Chinese culture, you know, and yeah. they too have their own. But the, the moment you come into contact with Christ, you know, for me the sacrifice of doing that means you drop certain things yeah so you're gonna to have to drop things you know and that's the whole thing you're gonna to have to drop things you don't like including your culture you know and I remember I've been me and my mum have an amazing relationship now you know and I call her out on so many of these things why you know she was very much um you know I've done this I did this for my sister I did this for my mm -hmm. sister I was like mum you did it because you had because God gave you the enablement to do it yes you don't get the glory for it you know, but why do we think we should get the glory that I did this, I did yeah. this? Again, it's a very <laughs> entitled um, Nigerian culture, I'm afraid, but it's one day at a time. One day at a time, I think. Well, you see, yeah. that's why, I mean, that's why I love what we're doing, talking about mm. this, because one of the things um, Rene Brown said is that, is that shame cannot thrive when it's been spoken. Mm -hmm. You know, once you talk about it, and all the other viruses mm. have come and shared their story. So I've shared my mm -hmm. story. What else can you do? Mm -hmm. So shame cannot thrive yeah. where it's been yeah. spoken. In fact, I, the, the other thing she said was that shame cannot survive empathy. Where, so for example, mm -hmm. when you tell people, when, when you got pregnant and you told people, I'm sure you had different categories. There, there's, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, how did when it happen? <laughs> Why did you let it happen? You know those kind of things. 
But then someone who, the friends, the close friends, the three friends or so that you said, stood by you. They mm. were like, we're in this together. You know, mm. so that kind of thing, you were able to open mm. up to them because she mm. will not, did not survive the mm. empathy that they showed you then. Yeah, absolutely. So we need to speak more because a lot of, a lot of the things that happen to us, they're not our mm. fault. Yeah. You know? A lot of this shame and judgment always happen in isolation. I totally yes. agree with that. And the yes. devil wants to do that to you. He wants to um, make you, you know, when, you, when people self-harm, when people yeah. are suicidal, you notice yeah. it's always by themselves. No one, no one writes a suicide note at a Christmas dinner party table. You know, it's always by themselves because the enemy knows that once you're by yourself. Do you know, I was just going to say, what she said, one other thing she said was, was that shame depends on me buying into the fact that I'm alone. Mm. I'm alone. Nobody exactly. else is, this, this thing hasn't happened yeah. to any other person. Even yeah. if it has, I'm yeah. alone. That's where shame tries. Yeah. Yeah. And every alone. girl I speak to, that's the first thing I say, you are not alone. Mm. Not, you are, if I have to I beg my husband for you to come and stay with us, you are not alone. Because the moment you get by yourself, yeah. the mind is just so powerful and all things start to happen yeah. when you're by yourself. Yeah. You know, I have friends who would call me. There was a group of friends. I just want to give a shout out to them. Um, the Reconnect leaders of a long time ago. They would never let me by myself. Mm. One was calling me. One was at my door. One was messaging me. One was sending me an email. Literally, they were bombarding me to make sure that I was never by myself. And I, mm. that is so key yeah. um, to, to never leave people by themselves. Yeah, they were in that. I can't see any wow. of the comments, by the way. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not allowing me to see the comments. But, um, There's some questions, but I really have to go because already I don't know. And I need to go to the recording somewhere. Um, I think there's a question about... What would you tell your younger self? And the other question is, what would you tell your your dense self? I guess the same thing. Um, okay. So what would you tell your younger self? That I'm enough. Like, I didn't have to prove anything to anybody when I was 19. I was enough. I didn't have to accept anything. Um, yeah, I, that I was just amazing. Because um, when, I, when I think about how did this spiral all the way? You know, how did this get this far? It always goes back to me needing either validation from him or thinking I wasn't enough. And not that someone had told me when I was 12, you're not enough. But I don't think I got the validation from my parents. And we crave it. You know, where that's how humans are. And I don't, and not because they didn't want to say it either. That's they, par they were parenting me the way they knew how. Yeah. Whereas I'm a lot, I'm a lot more intentional. So I would definitely tell myself how I parent. So I tell her all the time, she's not her hair. You know, she didn't have to feel like the way her hair is that morning. Yeah. You know, um, teach her a lot about resilience. You know, just because your laptop doesn't start that morning doesn't mean you're going to have a horrible day. Mm. You know, um, that she's black, she's beautiful. I don't buy into this whole, um, she's going to be less privileged because she's black. Anything you want to do, you do it. You can do it. You know, it, your yeah. gifts will make room for you. God will make Amen. room for you. Your blackness makes room for you. So I'm quite intentional, whereas my my mum wasn't or my dad. I know they loved me. Mm. And so when I'm when a guy's saying, Oh, you look nice, I'm like, Oh, okay. Someone said it. Wow, oh, I look nice. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I should know that I look nice without someone yeah. having to tell me that. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So Wow. So, yeah, Thank you so much. Oh, David, I love you yeah. so much. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know where I came across it, but something about um, someone said, you have no right to parent a child if you haven't been parented yourself. Because a lot of times we're trying to parent, but we ourselves haven't been parented. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. I, so I, don't know the, I don't know the answer for that because there's so many people having children. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I guess. I think yeah. what we need to do, especially if we know that we never had that, as in mm. we're not parented properly, was, mm. so to speak, mm. is to learn yeah. from others. Yeah. You know, be intentional about, like you said, be intentional about, okay, yeah. I did not have this, but I know that yeah. the way I'm parenting my child, like you've said, mm -hmm. then I'm going to do better. Yeah. And, and re like I read about parenting, because I don't know it yeah. all. Yeah. I don't know at what stage I need to change my parenting. She's yeah. nine now, so I can't parent her the same way I parented her when she was two. Yeah. You know, and she's going to be 13 and 15. And I read a lot. 
and I ask questions a lot because I don't yeah. know it. Whereas before, I don't think, you know, if someone saw you asking questions, it's a sign of weakness. That means you don't know. Mm, and it's not. And it's not. It's just, it's yeah. Not. It's not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, there's a parenting Wow. Okay, there's a parenting course, HTB. Thank you, Anna, for that. Parenting oh, course, thank you. HTB. So, yeah, we, if we all need help. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said. Mm -hmm. The way you parented her, too, is different from, uh, yeah. it's going to be different now. She's nine. So, mm -hmm. we all need help. Let's get help. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it all. Let's get help. Yeah, exactly. Timothy, God bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so courageous, being so <sighs> brave, being My so God, vulnerable. I can, like, it's out there now. <laughs> really, 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 really love you. Seriously. Really oh, I love, love you too. And thank you so much. And thanks for the love, guys. Wow. God bless you. And folks, thank you for joining us today. Please show her some love and more hugs because she's really been amazing. <laughs> show her some love. Yes. Yay. <laughs> so and fun. next week, we're going to be back next week. Next week, um, we're going to celebrate, um, what's it called now? International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And we've got an amazing woman who's going to come and join us. So thank you, folks, for joining thank us. Thank you so this much. Thank you. Thank you, darling. See, all the thank love. You. Yay! <laughs> oh, amazing. So, thank you all. Please share the replay with um, people. And if you need to contact Timidi to find out more, Please, her handle is letters to me. Letters, yes. what was it? Letters, the number two. Number, number two. two to me. Then me. Yeah, is there any me. 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 Can someone no. help to put it up, please? Letters to me at letters yes. to me. Because there's other questions and I won't be able to take those questions now, please. Um, so but please, yeah, message. find another way. Yeah, send her a direct message and I'm sure she wouldn't mind answering some of the questions. Mm. Um, point you in the right direction, please, please, please. It's um, let me put it up because I don't think letters to me. Thank you. Yeah, uh, is it done? Okay, I still can't see the comments, which is really annoying. Uh, is it this one? Let me see. Oh, let me see now. Letters to I'm trying to pin it. Oh, okay, I need to remove this one first. Okay, uh, oh, it does have an underscore. My bad. Sorry. Oh, that's it. So letters to me. Underscore to me, yeah. Underscore, okay, to me, yeah. Okay. So please contact her. And yes, like someone said, thank you for being open, honest, and sharing your journey. Very liberating. Very liberating. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Have a good See afternoon. See you, folks. Everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Love you lots. Love you. Bye.